Let's talk about Oasis. Uh, uh, let's talk to um, a really interesting guy because uh, he might have known about this reunion some months ago. Uh, he is the editor of Louder Than War, uh, rock journalist John Robb. Uh, welcome to the show, John. Hi, Kevin. How are you? OK? I'm all right, mate. Uh, yeah, t Louder Than War, is that uh, just a website or is it a, a magazine as well? I'm looking at the website, by the way. Very good. Oh, thank you. Well, sometimes it's a magazine, but it's mostly a website. OK. You know, now, online is just much more effective, isn't it? It's quicker. Yeah. yeah. Very nice-looking site, though. Uh, congratulations. Uh, so, listen, uh, I gather... Well, I know. Uh, you interviewed Noel Gallagher on June the 3rd. Now, your interview was only released uh, last Thursday. Uh, it's an interview where Noel talks about writing his early songs, early days of the band. He's very, very relaxed about it. Uh, uh, I tell you, now we're all thinking about Oasis. I mean, they did not write some good lyrics. And uh, Noel always was very complimentary about Liam's voice, and well he should be, one of the great rock voices of all time. Unusual, but brilliant. Uh, but uh, did you glean when you spoke to, uh, when you interviewed Noel uh, those months ago, that this reunion was on? Did he pretty much tell you that it would happen? Well, I think uh, in the 15 years since they split, Noel and Liam hadn't been very complimentary about each other at all, actually. <laughs> so this is the first interview that he'd done for a long time when he was very complimentary. And he was saying that Liam had one of the great rock and roll voices, a brilliant front man, and he sounded very sentimental about the group. And it, it wasn't like he walked into the room and said, "You know what? We're going to in about three months' time, we're going to reform the band." It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was, it was kind of like the sort of thing you would normally do. Yeah. So he, he didn't. There was. You could feel there's a shift in mood. So yeah. la, last Thursday, when the interview went out, people watching and going, "Oh my God, this is such a different thing. It's such a different vibe to this. Could something be happening? Will, will this interview spark some thorough relations?" But then 48 hours later they'd actually reform. So, so there's obviously something going on in the background, but it's hard to know exactly when the thing in the background actually started. It could be a year ago, six months ago, or three days ago. Mm. It's, it's. I mean, I like that as well. I like the way there's a sense of mystique. You don't actually really know. Mm -hmm. And it's and it actually happens, which is so unexpected. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to, to, this, uh, the 14-year feud, if you like, uh, when Noel stormed out of the band, uh, I mean, do you think in the back of their mind always would be there's a massive payday uh, for us if we ever get back together? I mean, there's talk that they could make 50 million quid each out of this tour. They're going to go to Edinburgh, Cardiff, Manchester, London, Dublin, and then maybe do a European tour. Do you think this was always in the back of their minds? Well, that would be hard to avoid because I think every single day somebody would mention that, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, everywhere you went, every interview you did, every single thing you saw online, and, and Liam is very, he's always online, isn't he? Yeah. And there's, there's always people, always people talk about the amount of money they can make, but is that the prime motivation for this? I'm, I'm certainly sure it's a motivation for it, but I think there's other motivations as well. I mean, it probably feels unresolved, you know, when your band falls apart after a few albums, you always think, well, maybe there's more we could do with this. And also, if if anybody, you know, listen to this or, you know, watching this, you know, who's ever been in a band, you know, you get that moment where it actually is an unspoken language. It's quite magical that things work with people in the room. It doesn't happen with most people. And I think maybe Noel and Liam thought, you know what, it wouldn't be great if we just stood in a room and did something again because it would... Because they feel the power of it as well and the excitement of it. And maybe it's just because... You know, after all that time, it actually is your brother, and you could really fall out with them. But it's not like you can never see them again. They are, even if you don't speak to them for fifteen years, it's all sort of they're always circling around you somewhere. So maybe it was time to resolve that a bit as well. You know, what I like about them; they're both masters of the great quote. And Noel said, uh, I "Always liked my mother until she gave birth to Liam." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, um, what's your favourite Oasis song? Um, I think Live Forever because it really sums up what really works about the band. You know, I mean, there's, there's, no, there's nothing super complex about Oasis, which is what I really like as well. Yeah. Coming from more, I'm older, I'm punk generation. I like, I like simple but effective yeah. pop culture. It's, it's always the best, isn't it? And um, I think also the idea of that song, the idea that you know, when you're 16, 17, 18, 
and you feel like you're going to live forever. Life's eternal. It's completely brilliant. You have no responsibilities. You go out for four days, sleep in a ditch, go home and don't feel tired. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. And the rest of your life is not like that. This is You're not free <laughs> Tell anymore. me about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, like I do know, know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean, John. <laughs> uh, uh, do you know what, you want to know what my uh, favourite Oasis track is? It's controversial and unusual. Gas Panic. Oh, it's, that's a good song, that. It's it actually is a not good one song, novels, isn't it? Is it? Good song. Yeah. Uh, listen, yeah. uh, so, so uh, I wanted to ask you about the uh, economics of rock. It was my understanding that uh, the real money in rock is from the big stadium bands, you know, Rolling Stones, Grateful Dead, uh, U2, all of that. Obviously, uh, Oasis uh, can now be a massive uh, stadium band. Is that where the money is? Or if they make a, a recording of these live performances, will that make them more money? Where's the big money in music these days? Because I always hear artists complaining you don't make anything off streaming, etc., etc. Yeah, I mean, streaming is not a great financial model unless you really understand how to make it work and streaming is carved up between the streaming companies, the record labels and the publishers, so the bands don't get very much. But if you actually own your own own tracks and you don't and you buy the back off a record label like some bands have done, you can make a bit more out of streaming. But the model for musicians has always been weighted against them, you know, it's always... Because people are young when they sign contracts and, you know, in the 60s, people were right hideously ripped off mm. and now they're subtly ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, people smile at you and, and take all your money. So it's uh, for a musician, it's... And, you know, musicians, because they're creative people, they just want to play the musical instruments and make art. They don't want to sit there and pour over contracts and think of their percentages. You know, it's the wrong side of your brain. So they are right for being ripped off. So the model now... Well, when I was growing up, it was about uh, hit singles which sold albums and the tour was part of the promotion for the album. But about 10 years ago, that flipped round, didn't it? It was, it was more about lives and merchandise yeah. and yeah. that's how people made the money. And in a way, the album was... was Instead of the tour promoting the album, the album promoting the tour, so it's kind of the other way around. So now with Oasis, the, you know, this... Well, they, they, they could actually spend the next 10 years, every two or three years, just going out and playing all the hits and still sell the gigs out and make all the money. But they would probably get bored of that because they probably want to do more stuff. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what their plan is, but they, they, they wouldn't be totally unlikely if they keep this thing together to do another record at some point. That'd be good, wouldn't it? I mean, it, what they say when you go to a live concert, the most dreaded words from the performers are, here's one from the new album. Uh, yeah, but, but, don't, but I think they'd make a good album. Just before you go, John... Well, so what, what makes, oh, sorry, but what makes me laugh about that is that yeah. two years later, that's everyone's favourite song. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly right, yeah. Uh, what What is so special about uh, Oasis? I mean, I, I think uh, Noel Gallagher... Is a, a brilliant songwriter, an absolutely brilliant songwriter, and they are one hell of a tight band. What, what, but, but there's a few other great songwriters and tight bands. What's so special about Oasis, do you think? I think, well, well Noel's a great melodic songwriter. Yeah. There's, there's a fantastic aggression to it. They're exciting. But also, there's a, there's a sort of hidden sensitivity as well. There's a vulnerability about them. You know, they, 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 they like, they, they do the northern kind of archetype, you know, laddie archetype, but there's something... Uh, th there's a vulnerability in there as well, which is which is an attractive uh, thing in a, in a songwriter, creative person. And the trump card is he's not just Noel, is it? I mean, Noel's a, he's a good singer. Like you said in the interview to me, so it Liam is one of the great rock and roll singers, full of attitude, that voice, the hybrid of John Lennon and Johnny Rotten, um, sort of cranked up through a Man Manchester thing. Uh, it's, it's great. He's, he's got a very melodic voice, but that yeah. rasping intensity as well, which everybody, well, a lot of people can connect with. It's, it's an infernal, exciting energy with great anthemic anthems you can sing along to. Yeah, sl slightly threatening. I like that. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly right. And um, somebody once said, uh, and I think it's a really good thing to say about Oasis, that Oasis don't have fans, they have supporters. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true, isn't it? Hey, listen, John, uh, are you going to go to the first concert then? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm well, you get thinking... your, he's your mate, isn't he, Noel? Can you get me a couple of tickets? <laughs> <laughs> well, Saturday morning, you know where the box office is, online. Yeah. Hey, mate, I'm a journalist. I'm going to get some VIPs, you know, a box, champagne, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I hate listen... that, though. That's the worst place to be in a gig. I want to be in the crowd yeah, you where be... the fun is. You could yeah. be right. You could be right. Uh, I do want to go and see them, though. John, really good to talk to you. Thank you, mate. Uh, and uh, enjoy the reunion when it happens. That's John Robb there, uh, rock journalist, editor of... Of louder than war.